Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I'm kind of continuing my previous series around graph databases and taking a deep dive into Neo4j, um, which is one of the most popular graph databases right now on the market. Um, and so if you're not aware of graph databases, definitely go check out my previous video, but just quick primer. They are essentially a departure from traditional databases, which are just you know handle data in rows and columns and handle data in nodes and edges. So you have uh, dots of data that represent users and then edges, which are lines that represent the relationships between those different dots. Um, and so Neo4j is one of the top graph databases uh, and really excels at managing and querying these intricate data relationships. Um, so you can kind of see some really high level examples. Don't worry, we're gonna go deeper. Um, but just wanna first lay out at its core, what is Neo4j? Um, and so it is a highly scalable uh, native graph database that's designed to leverage data relationships as first class entities. So uses graph structures with these nodes, edges, and then properties that describe both of those to represent and store data. And so this structure makes Neo4j really adept at handling connected data, uh, where relationships between the data points are as crucial as the data points themselves. Um, and so Neo4j works in storing data like many other databases in many similar uh, ways to other graph databases where you have these nodes which represent entities in a graph and these nodes can be you know person place event really any data point um, here you have michael hunger on the right uh, and you have just different relationships between different people um, and then these relationships are the connections between nodes. So you can see here has tag uh, is a connection. So this person is tagged as a logging uh, interaction or this uh, data point is. Um, and so these relationships can have both types, so there's a type of relationship and then also direction. So friends with or purchased where the arrow will dictate, hey, this node purchased this product and that's dictated by that particular edge. Um, and then you also have properties, which are key value pairs that are associated with nodes and relationships that store uh, relevant information. Now, what makes Neo4j unique is its use of the Cypher query language, which is important understanding. So let's go into what Cypher programming is and how you can use it. So here we have a fun example of how the Cypher query language actually works. Um, so Cypher is a really powerful and expressive query language that is specifically tailored for graph databases. Uh, and this allows you to specify patterns in graphs and then perform complex queries with ease. So it's a little bit like, like SQL, but it's been more optimized for graph transversal and some of the kind of nuances there as well. Um, so we can see here, you know, hey, I want to match this person, Tom Hanks, any movies that he acts in, uh, I want to get any co-actors, and I want, so any actors that, are also, that also act in the same movie that Tom Hanks was in, um, and then return what their title was. Um, or you, so you could have a sim simpler one that's just, hey, give me all the people that, or all the movies that Tom Hanks uh, are in, uh, but I wanna just kind of show you how you can build on this uh, as well. Or you could say, hey, uh, where, uh, give me all the movies, or all the Tom Hanks movies that he's acted in where, uh, I don't even really know the director he's worked with, but any director that he's worked with, you can really kind of filter it down and, and you know, add that, but also define the relationships like they would be in the graph using these arrows. Um, and so that will return uh, all the co-actors uh, that are in Tom Hanks's movies with it. So index-free adjacency uh, is a fundamental concept in graph database like Neo4j that really enhances the performance of them for complex queries like deep traversals. And what this is, is you know, kind of lay out the groundwork first, is you know, in traditional databases, data retrieval really relies on indexes to quickly locate and join tables based on key columns, um, which it makes simple queries much more efficient, it can be a bit sluggish with extensive joins relationships, but in general, it reduces the amount of data that the database actually has to look up to make these joins. Now, index-free adjacency means that each node in the graph contains direct references or pointers to its adjacent nodes. And so this model allows for immediate access to connected nodes without needing to consult a global index. Um, and when a query is executed, the database engine can transverse from one node to another directly via those references like, they're, like it's following a predefined path. 
And then this direct access also reduces the computational overhead associated with those index lookups and join operations um, because it's able to just quickly access that specific data point rather than even going through a predefined path to actually access it. Um, and so the primary benefit is the speed and efficiency that this uh, adjacency brings to graph transversals. And then also when querying for relationships, database can move swiftly from one node to its neighbors, which helps to maintain high performance, even as the depth and complexity of the query might increase. Um, and so this is really advantageous for scenarios where we have deeply nested or really highly interconnected data, like the kind of social networks, recommendation systems, and fraud detection that Neo4j is primarily used for. Um, and so also, this enhances the scalability of the database because as the graph grows, it takes longer times to transverse relation, or as a graph grows, while you might think it would take longer time to transverse, relationships actually remain relatively constant, so it allows you to handle larger data sets and more complex queries without a proportional increase in latency. Um, and this is what allows Neo4j to be so scalable uh, and to enable really easy data access, even for these complex social networks and graph kind of databases. Um, so I know we kind of took a little sidetrack, but it's really crucial to understanding you know, Neo4j's advantages uh, as a graph database. So what are some reasons you might want to use Neo4j? Uh, well, number one, it does really well in terms of performance on connected data. Uh, Neo4j really excels in handling data where there's multiple different joins, there's really you know, complex relationships that need to be uh, identified and been, you know, recorded. Um, and trying to model these in a relational database and having tons of foreign and primary keys and performance bottlenecks and having to do many different joins it becomes incredibly computationally expensive. And Neo4j's graph-based model with that you know, uh, index-free adjacency allows for near instantaneous transversal of relationships. So queries that involve deep or complex relationships can be executed in real time, which provides a massive boost in efficiency. Um, and then also you can do things like, hey, I wanna find all the friends in a social network without needing to uh, quickly do many different multiple uh, join operations. So it's really well suited for applications where the relationships between the data points are as crucial as the data points themselves. Secondly, you also have intuitive data modeling. Neo4j's data model, being graph based, it really closely mirrors real world entities and their interconnections. So it's much more intuitive for people that might not be able to read, you know, just rows and columns and doing all those complex joins or represent relationships. Almost everyone can understand, hey, this person is a friend of, or this relates to this thing, and kind of transverse across the graph and see, hey, these relationships, this relates to this, this relates to that, um, to directly model entities in those interactions, and then simplify the process of data modeling and allow for that more natural representation of data. Um, so, for example, modeling a social network with users and friendships is straightforward in Neo4j, but would be just incredibly complex and difficult to actually visualize within a traditional database. Um, and then you also have scalability, as we talked before. So because of all the reasons we've talked about earlier, it's really, the O4G is super scalable. Uh, horizontally, where you can just add additional servers and clusters and then still have that same quick transversal time, that quick access time because of that index free adjacency. So performance remains robust even as your database becomes more extensive and complex, which it's going to with graph data. It's just super, super complex and you have to maintain all that information about the relationships, you need to have efficient ways to actually access it. Then, you also have a very rich ecosystem around it. Um, you know, there is a ton of tools and integrations that allow you to extend Neo4j and enhance its functionality and usability. Um, so you have things like Neo4j Bloom, which has visualization capabilities, uh, and also integrates seamlessly with other big data technologies like Spark or Kafka, allowing you to ingest or extract data uh, from you know, services uh, and enable more advanced data processing and real-time analytics downstream of the actual graph database. Um, and then also, wider range of programming language. So I showed you Cypher because I wanted to show you, you know, what you would use to actually interact with Neo4j, but there's a wide range of programming languages like Java, Python, and JavaScript that also support interactions with Neo4j um, and allows you to integrate it into your existing workflows and systems. Now, unfortunately, on the con side of things, there are a few. Um, so number one is the learning curve. For people that are accustomed to relational databases, the transition to a graph database can be quite challenging because it does require a bit of a mental model shift. Um, you know, the graph data model in Cypher query language is a departure from the SQL-based relational paradigm. So you really need to kind of rethink how you 
perform and write your queries for graph operations, and then also adjust your thinking to model data in terms of nodes and relationships instead of the tabular structure of relational databases. Then you also have complexity in simple queries. So like you saw that's very simple query that I uh, had you know, just for finding movies that Tom Hanks had co-actors in, or the, the co-actors of Tom Hanks movies. That was a pretty long query and it can kind of introduce unnecessary complexity for simple queries and data sets that don't have a ton of relationships. So if your data can be easily represented and queried using a straight for tabular structure, you might just want to go with that. Don't just try and cram stuff into graph databases because you think they're cool. Uh, there really is a lot of overhead, so it's designed for those more complex, you know, kind of web-like relationship graphs rather than data that could be going into a relational database. Um, and then also cost, it can be quite expensive, and it also has some limited relational features. So you know, like I said, transactional integrity, aggregations, things like that are going to be a little bit difficult to perform on Neo4j. So you might want to think about that before you actually uh, go down that path. Um, but that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to make kind of a quick primer on Neo4j, some of the things that make it special, some of the reasons why you might want to explore new, using Neo4j as your graph database. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.